Speaker, it is against this backdrop that I seek a statement from the chairperson of the departmental committee on lands on the following. One, under what circumstances was LR number 140 stroke 4 stroke men and love north registered in the name of Mr. Saidi Swale Musa and Shifaye Swale Musa despite being community land? Two, what is the status of investigation into the regular location of the said parcel of land? Three, what measures will the Ministry of Lands put in place to revoke the location of the said land if found in conservation of the law and revert the same to Gongoni community? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Chairman Lands, Nyamoko. Give him the mic. Yes, uh, member for Changamwe. Give Yamoko, take your seat. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to express an interest in this matter. The said land belongs to our family. We have a title deed, chain in one, and the honorable member is aware that we own that piece of land. The, the so-called Shifea side are actually my cousins. So I wish to state very categorical here that this land belongs to us and we have a title deed, which is a genuine title deed. And the honorable member is aware. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. Moko. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker will give a response in two weeks' time, 14 days. Next order. Pardon? Yes, uh, Bowen. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I, I, I thought the owner of the land has already responded. I don't know if, if there is need for the committee again to go look into who is the owner of the land when the owner is already here and he has said that the land belongs to him. Is there a need for the committee again to go and look who is the owner? That notwithstanding, the statement is directed at the chairman of lands. He has to come and respond. Next order. Order number eight, procedural motion. Resolution to hold a Tuesday morning sitting. Majority leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, <clears throat> I beg to move that pursuant to the provision of standing order 33C, this house resolves to hold a morning sitting on Tuesday 25th, June 2024 commencing at 9.30 a.m. for purposes of considering priority business. Honorable Speaker, members will realize uh, we have very crucial business ahead of us today, top among them being the continuation of the finance bill. And Honorable Speaker, I must thank the Gen Zs also, because Honorable Speaker, for the first time in the history of this house, especially this 13th parliament, at 8.30 a.m., not less than 50 members were already logged in. So, if not for anything else, the Gen Zs have made members of parliament to report to work very early. <laughs> and it's a good thing. It's the beauty of our democracy, Honorable Speaker. And uh, now that we reported this early, Honorable Speaker, to contribute to the finance bill, I am certain, if you look at the numbers, we may not have enough time to finish with the finance bill today and move on to the IABC amendments from the Senate, and members will understand how crucial that business is. So we want to make sure that we have adequate time to complete the finance bill, the committee of the whole, without anticipating debate uh, next week, and also be able to complete with the IABC amendments from the Senate 
in time uh, before we uh, progress to the short recess that is uh, due the following week. And Honorable Speaker, you, you are aware next week is the last week of the, this month, and we ought to have passed both the finance bill and the appropriations bill that are also lined up uh, uh, next week, which I'll be speaking to later this afternoon during the usual Thursday statement. I therefore wish to appeal to members to support so that we have adequate time to process all this business. And I wish to request, I beg to move and request the leader of minority to second. Yeah, yeah, the Honorable Speaker, I wish to second. And for the simple reason that I consider the matter of the IBC uh, so crucial that we cannot afford to delay it any further. Uh, and therefore, uh, let's proceed in the manner proposed by the leader of majority. Thank you. I second. All the honorable members on their feet, take your seats. Honorable members, I now propose the question, which is that pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 33C, this House resolves to hold a morning sitting on Tuesday, 25th June 2024, commencing at 9.30 a.m. for purposes of considering priority business. Put the question. Yes. Uh, Member for same. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I rise to support, uh, there's a related matter that I would like to raise, but basically it again to seek a clarification from you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, you had indicated earlier, and I know that we are likely to go to the committee of the whole house on the finance bill. And that's one of the reasons we are really sitting on that day, on, uh, on Tuesday. But also you indicated last evening that those who want to make amendments should have their amendments in by 1 p.m. today. Mr. Speaker, the clarification I was seeking, normally we have more time. Why are we limiting today if the committee of the whole house is likely to be on Tuesday, as you had indicated? Because one would have thought that even up to uh, tomorrow, midday, would still be adequate. That's the clarification I needed. Uh, but otherwise, Mr. Speaker, I support the Tuesday sitting. Before I put the question on Nikal, uh, I have made an, a pronouncement about four times on this floor that those who have amendments file them by one o'clock today. For the simple reason that one, the bill has attracted a lot of contentious arguments and proposals. Two, the committee itself in its report has recommended a myriad of amendments to the bill. Three, we want to have sufficient time for amendments that may be identical or overlapping to be harmonized. And we can't do that if we are constrained with time. Four, if you are speaking for yourself, you are the sort of member of parliament who I know would draft an amendment before the bill is even moved. So I don't know why you want extra time. I, I, I will, uh, my direction that all amendments be filed by one o'clock stands, I don't think is injurious to any member. I don't think it uh, oppresses any member. And since the time I started making the pronouncement, no member has raised any reservation, uh, Dr. Nikal. And I believe uh, your reservation is not only uh, unhelpful, but will just draw us back to management of house business that uh, will not be helpful. Yes. Yes, Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I wanted to add to your four points. Yes. Five, since you got up to four, is that this is a, uh, is a money bill. And being a money bill in line with Article 114 and on standing orders, all the amendments that members will be proposing must be shared with the National Treasury for concurrence. And therefore, if we allow more time, then there will be no time for the back and forth between the National Assembly and Treasury. 
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, you should uh, actually appreciate the speaker because ordinarily the office that receives amendments will just tell you it has been closed. At least I've given you sufficient notice on the direction of time. Thank you. Yes, Okello. Let's not int eat into debating time. Yes. Give Okello the mic. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I've got a, uh, a question related to that, whereas I also support uh, the issue of IBC that needs to be fast-tracked uh, based on the fact that at least no, not less than two constituencies are now disenfranchised as a result of IBC. Jared Okello, that is a moot point. Your own leader has said this here five times. Yeah, I've got a question. I don't question. know why you should repeat I, it. I'm coming to a question, Honorable Take Speaker. Take your seat. If you had to use up your leader's powers, <laughs> the speaker will not assist you on that. Honorable members, I now put the question, which is that pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 33C, this House resolves to hold a morning sitting on Tuesday, 25th June 2024, commencing at 9.30 a.m. for purposes of considering priority business. As members of that opinion say aye. aye, will those of the contrary opinion say nay? The ayes have it. Next order. Order number nine, the finance bill, National Assembly Bill number 30 of 2024, resumption of debate. Yes, Honorable Wandai. Give him the mic. Give him the mic. Why his mic? Is, eh? I'm told your mic is malfunctioning. Put where Kainan is. Yes, Honorable Speaker, sorry. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I just, I've got an issue I need to raise now before we can proceed with the debate uh, that was uh, going on yesterday. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, my attention has been drawn to a letter <coughs> purportedly emanating from the Cabinet Secretary for National Treasury, and they had it dated 19th June, that was yesterday, and addressed to the clerk of the National Assembly. It's also copied to the Right Honorable Speaker. And it's a letter uh, concerning request for the advisory on conclusion of supply and ways and means process by the National Assembly. Honorable Speaker, going through this letter in a nutshell, really, in summary, the, the National Treasury CS is purporting to direct this House that, and I want just to, to read uh, some paragraph here, that we further note that following the ongoing debate on the Finance Bill 2024, should the Finance Bill 2024 be approved as proposed by the National Treasury, the National, the National Assembly can proceed with the consideration of the appropriations bill as published. However, if the revenue raising measures contained in the finance bill are not approved by the National Assembly, there will be a likely revenue shortfall of approximately Kenya shillings 200 billion. In order to remain within the provisions of the law, I'm just paraphrasing, we propose the following measures, and so on and so forth. Honorable Speaker, first and foremost, the Cabinet Secretary is treading on very slippery grounds. 
and indeed dangerous grounds. First, by purporting to direct the House on what it's supposed to do in its legislative role. Two, is also anticipating debate. Because as far as I'm aware, we are still on, at the stage of debating this bill. It is not up the duty of anybody out there to, to, to start anticipating how the, how, the debate, how the bill will go. But more importantly, on the speaker, Article 221 of the Constitution, if you can listen, to, if just, just pay me attention. Article 221 of the Constitution. It, I think, at, uh, okay. At, at, at uh, sabbatical six, it says that when the estimates of national government expenditure and the estimates of expenditure for the judiciary and parliament have been approved by the National Assembly, they shall be included in an appropriation bill we shall be introduced into the National Assembly to authorize withdrawal from the consultatory fund, and so on and so forth. That is the Constitution. But if you go further to the Public Finance Management Act, Section 40, Subsection 5, it says, and I want just to read quickly, that any, any of the recommendations made by the relevant committee of the National Assembly or adopted by the National Assembly on, revenues, on revenue matters shall, among other things, ensure that the total amount of revenue raised is consistent with the approved fiscal framework and the Division of Revenue Act. What am I saying? If you read the Constitution at Article 221, 5, together with the Public Finance Management Act, Section 40, Honorable Speaker, Subsection 5, you arrive at the conclusion that the Appropriations Bill can only be informed by the estimates, not by the Finance Bill. Honorable Speaker, that the appropriations bill can only flow or emanate from the estimates that we have actually approved this week or so in this house. So what, therefore, is the CS purporting to say here? He's saying that if we don't approve the, the, the finance bill as in the form it originated from, I think, National Treasury, we shall have Therefore, to review or change the appropriations bill to conform with the finance bill as passed. Honorable Speaker, my submission is that it is the bill, first and foremost, we need to know from the chair of the, of the Committee on Finance. Because the work of the Committee on Finance is to look for ways to raise money to finance the budget that has been passed. Are they saying that they were never to look for money to finance the budget that we passed last week. If so, the logical thing, Honorable Speaker, is to do a supplementary budget. That is the only logical thing, not to do what the CS is supporting, is supporting to direct us to do here. So, so what, what I want to ask you, Honorable Speaker, first and foremost, is to call the CS to order to order from your chair. He cannot be seen to be supervising this house. In other words, actually he's trying, he's trying to, to put pressure on this house to act in a particular manner. Yes. The CS of National Treasury, who is not elected by anybody, as far as I'm concerned, is purporting to supervise this house in his legislative role something that flies in the face of the Constitution and the relevant law, Honorable Speaker. So I would want, at the very least, that you direct that this letter be withdrawn by the National Treasury. And secondly, to, to, to compel him to commit not to attempt now or in the future to try to dictate to this House 
in the manner he's supposed to conduct his business. I submit on the speaker. Majority leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Let me thank the leader of majority for raising this particular issue about this letter. But Honorable Speaker, the minority leader, sorry. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, you know, they say any name can raise a baby. And today you are the majority, tomorrow you can be the minority. There is absolutely nothing wrong with uh, me, the slip of the tongue, referring to the Honorable Pio Wandai as the leader of majority. At times, uh, I've had people uh, with the slip of the tongue refer to Junette as the majority whip. At times, I am referred to as a minority leader, majority leader, majority whip. Any name is a name, provided we do what we are here to do. And Honorable Pio will tell you, in the last parliament, when we were with him here, the majority side, that was Jubilee, became the minority and had to depend on the minority side in its own government to, be, <laughs> to pretend to be the majority. The leader of majority then, the Honorable Kimunya, uh, the last two years, was the leader of the majority, but was actually a leader of the minority from the majority side. Because the Honorable Aden Duale, who was a ranking member like the Honorable John Buddy, was the leader of the majority on the majority side. <laughs> but moving on, Honorable Speaker, I was thanking the Honorable Pio for raising this issue because it's important that we all get to an understanding not just of the import of this letter, but the import of all the proposed amends, amendments that we will do to the finance bill, Honorable Speaker. And it's good that uh, when you are responding to the Honorable Nikal, you did point out some of those issues. And principally, Honorable Speaker, the last point that I added, that this being a money bill, we must get the concurrence of the National Treasury. And there is reason as to why the drafters of our Constitution, Article 114, put that particular provision of concurrence with the National Treasury. Honorable Speaker, if you read that letter, it points to provisions of the law as it is. Professor Ndungu, who assigned this letter, he is not referring to anything that is outside of the law and the provisions of our constitution. He refers to section 39.4c of the PFM Act, which requires that any increase in expenditure in a proposed appropriation is balanced by a reduction in expenditure in another uh, proposed appropriation. And Honorable Speaker, he goes on to quote section 45 of the PFM Act and other sections of the PFM Act that indicate that if we are to reduce the proposed revenue estimates, Honorable Speaker, then concurrently, and I said it on Tuesday, something must give in. If we reduce taxes that are proposed to be the revenue-raising measures to finance the budget that we have adopted, then we must find a way of either reducing expenditure, the expenditure side, because if you don't do so, what you will do is increase, increase the, uh, uh, the fiscal deficit. It is this House, Honorable Speaker, and I was hoping the Honorable Juguna Ndungu had pointed to it, and I see he hadn't, that we passed a debt ceiling in this House. We cannot go beyond that which we have passed in this House. The National Treasury cannot borrow beyond a certain point a ceiling that we have set by law in this house. And therefore, if you're asking that let us reduce the revenues, but don't touch the expenditure side, what we are doing is simply telling the National Treasury, increase the fiscal deficit against the law. And we cannot act against the law. I know we are the lawmakers, but we are not allowed by the Constitution to act ultra via the Constitution. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, what the cabinet secretary, it, be, it could be a uh, preemptive, it could be preemptive that I want to agree with the Honorable Pio. It is preempting debate, but the Honorable uh, Juguna Ndungu, CS Juguna Ndungu, is not engaging in debate. This is an advisory opinion to us, reminding us that we need to abide by the Constitution and by our own laws, Honorable Speaker. The leader of minority spoke to the need and he has asserted that the right thing 
And he said it so emphatically, you would want to believe him, that the right thing to do is to do a supplementary budget. That is the wrong thing to do. <laughs> it is the wrong thing to do, Honorable Speaker, because you cannot begin from a mistake and say now we will break the law at this particular stage, then we will fix it with a supplementary budget. A supplementary budget should only come in once we have first, in the first instance, abound by what is provided for in the law. We have not bust our fiscal deficit as, uh, as stipulated under our PFM Act. And if in the course of implementation of this budget, there are additional expenditures that then would lead to a busting of that fiscal deficit, then we call for a supplementary budget. But we cannot say that at this point what we should be doing is a supplementary budget. What shall we be supplementing if we are even yet to pass the appropriations bill? We need to pass the appropriations bill so th and the finance bill so that we complete the budget making cycle. Once you complete the budget making cycle, then after that you can do a supplementary budget. But we cannot complete a budget making cycle against the law. And that is what Honorable Pio and I is telling us that we should do. It is my humble submission, Honorable Speaker, then, that this letter is in good standing and this is the way it is. I saw a number of votes, Honorable Speaker. And I said on uh, Tuesday, Honorable Speaker, when this report was tabled, that someone once quipped that choices have consequences. And in lawmaking, the same is true. If we choose to cut on our revenue raising measures, as the Finance Committee has proposed, there will definitely be consequences. Honorable Speaker, I am fortunate to have been in this house in the last parliament. The Honorable Andai, who has raised this issue, and the Honorable Junette were in this house in 2018. In 2018, Honorable Speaker, you remember the contentious Uhuru second term, the second, of, the second finance bill. It was equally contentious. And you remember the, six, the debate that was there then about uh, fuel, from 16%, 8%, from 0% VAT. And when we did the revenue raising measures bill in the, the form of a finance bill, consequently, we had to adjust the expenditure side. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, it is not the first time it is happening, and it is not the last time. Therefore, if our JSS teachers who we appropriated resources to hire, if there isn't enough adequate resources to hire JSS teachers, then something has to give in. If there is a road in Ugunja constituency that was to be tarmacked and the resources are not enough, I mean, or in Kikui constituency for that matter, then we just have to do away with them, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, I just want to ask the Honorable Peer to hold his horses. In actual fact, what we are doing now is anticipating debate, Honorable Speaker. We are the ones now who are anticipating debate because we are yet to complete the finance bill because at the conclusion of the finance bill, it is only at that point we'll be able to tell the net effect of all the changes that have been made and decide whether then we need whatever quantum we need to adjust on the expenditure side. Honorable Speaker, let me just conclude by saying we cannot and we shall not have our cake and eat it at the same time. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Order, Honorable Members. Order, Honorable Members, this issue is very straightforward. Mm -hmm. But for purposes of record, I'll give you a direction at 2.30. Meanwhile, we proceed with the debate. It has, it has absolutely no impact on the debate going on. I will give you a direction at 2.30. Order, Honorable Wandai, you have so ably prosecuted your case and uh, the majority leader has responded. Uh, budget chairman, I will, uh, in fact, pass on these letters to you. So uh, I'm not opening debate on this. Call out the next order. Order, honorable members, order. I, when I came to the chamber, I had seen this letter. And I had also my own feelings about it. 
I'll give you direction at 2.30. I don't have to consume parliamentary time debating something that is very clear in my mind. My thoughts are very rich, Jeanette. Have you called that? Order, honorable members, order. Back to the finance bill, we have 120 requests. With 120 requests, at five minutes, we need about nine to 10 hours. Can I ask the majority and minority leader to approach the chair? The majority and minority leader approach the chair. Order, honorable members. Order, Wangela, take your seat. Order, Bandi, take your seat. Order, honorable members. Honorable members, I want us to proceed as follows. We have uh, honorable Zeng, is it Zambia? Who has three and a half minutes to go. I've told you how many of you have keyed in. At 7 a.m. this morning, 50 members had already keyed in. But that shows the intensity of interest in the bill. We will start the debate now up to 1. In the afternoon, I'll give you one hour from 2.30 to 3.30. We will not need Honorable Pukose to call for the mover to reply. The mover will be called by the speaker to reply at 3.30, whereafter we shall go to vote. I've consulted with your leadership on whether we should go on with five minutes and cut off at the hours we have agreed, or allow more members to contribute by truncating the time to three minutes. If you agree to three minutes, we can order, we can truncate the time to three minutes so that more members can speak. Is that all right with the House? I put the question that the time for contribution be reduced from five minutes to three minutes as members of that opinion say aye. aye. Will those of the contra opinion say nay? Nay. The ayes have it. Secondly, secondly, honorable members, I encourage you to desist from raising frivolous points of order. Because some members have been raising points of order that are completely far from points of order. <laughs> yes. So, in Zambia, you will finish. You are three and a half minutes. The next members I call, you will be taking three minutes. Members, you also keyed in very early, but sometimes the chair may not necessarily follow the list because you find like you have 10 members in a row from one side. We have to balance the house. So we will be jumping uh, and zigzagging in the list to make sure there's some balanced representation on the floor. Zambia, go on. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. Honorable Speaker, we have a responsibility as a house uh, to, to protect the interests of our, our Kenyan citizens. Honorable Speaker, I totally oppose this uh, finance bill 
Uh, results being that, uh, Honorable Speaker, we understand that uh, the motor vehicle tax, edible, uh, edible oil tax, among others, have been deleted. But, Honorable Speaker, there are so many hidden taxes. Uh, Honorable Speaker, when you talk of seven shillings per litre uh, in fuel levy, it means that the cost of production in the local industries will go up. Honorable Speaker, even the cost of producing bread will, will be higher than even the normal rate as, as at now. Honorable Speaker, uh, our Kenyan citizens are struggling to, to, make, to put food on the table. Honorable Speaker, the cost of living is going to increase even further if we consider passing this bill. Honorable Speaker, I urge members of this House to consider the cry outside there of Akinawanjiku and the others. Honorable Speaker, the life of the Kenyan citizen of running businesses is totally unbearable as we speak now. Honorable Speaker, when it comes to the local industries, they are closing down their businesses. Reason being that the cost of production is going high and high every time. And the Honorable Speaker, we have come to understand that most of the, uh, most of the industries are closing down, making it not possible to keep on uh, uh, employing more of the Kenyan citizens. And Honorable Speaker, when we talk of the AD, NDF, there are so many hidden costs uh, which the Kenyan uh, as a house, we should come out clear to make sure that the cost of living of the Kenyan citizens is bearable. Thank you, Honorable Chair, uh, Speaker, and uh, as the government, when you talk, when you, 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 uh, you talk of the hustlers, the bottom borders, the mamambokas, it is very clear that it is, the things are getting worse and out of hand. Honorable Speaker, I urge this government to reconsider getting a, a better finance bill to move the Kenyan, the, the Kenyan citizens forward. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Member for Mandera West. Member for Mandera West. Order, Honorable Members. Order. The conversations are too loud. Order. Cynthia Muge, take your seat. You've been standing there for 10 minutes. Honorable members, those who want to engage in conversations, there's a lobby out there. You can go and converse and come back. Give me time to hear what members are saying and give those who want to listen to debate to listen to debate. Member for Mandera West. Give him a functioning mic. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this chance. Uh, to contribute to this very important uh, bill that is in front of us. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, finance bill is an annual event. It has been done from the time Kenya was born up to this time. I personally, I think this is the seventh one I am uh, contributing or participating in. And therefore, we all know that without finance bill, uh, there will be no government activity if you don't pass finance bill uh, and allow the government to continue with its activity, there will be no government activities. And we all know that uh, uh, the government is there for the interest of the community, the larger community. I take this opportunity to sincerely thank the finance committee uh, for listening for doing a very thorough uh, public participation all over the country. 
and for listening to the various issues that has been raised by the public and uh, for particularly uh, saying that uh, the contentious issues such as uh, the bread, the vat on bread, motor vehicle, the eco, the, the eco levy on sanitary bags and diapers, the exercise duties on vegetable oil and others which were contentious has, they have already recommended that uh, it be dropped. And therefore it is for this house to concur with the recommendation of the finance committee to drop uh, those very contentious issues. I have been uh, called uh, by my constituents so much, but as I explained to them what has been dropped, and particularly uh, the finance bill is looking at inc uh, putting one billion shilling for restocking. As you all know that uh, the area where I represent and others had a serious drought for four years and we lost almost all our livestock and we don't have any other uh, livelihood except uh, rearing of livestock. And this finance bill is giving us one billion to restock. That is a very big gain and my constituency have told me that make sure that one billion is protected. Uh, Honorable Speaker, sir, there are very important gains in this finance bill, particularly. Your time up, Irene Mayaka. You have three minutes, so compose your thoughts and compress them quickly. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I take this opportunity to emphatically reject the finance bill. And Honorable Speaker, one of the things that I just want to say and make very clear is that we should not subject ourselves to the pressures that are being implemented by the IMF on funding conditions that they are giving to this country. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank the Gen Z and the people of Kenya because they exercise their rights under Article 1 and 2 of the Constitution together with Article 37 of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, in my quest to reject the finance bill, one of the things that I just want to say very clearly, I keep hearing members telling us that we need to start using locally manufactured sanitary towels. And especially to our male members, I just want to tell you, stop taking Panadols for our, for our headache. Locally manufactured sanitary pads are not of good quality. You cannot expect young girls out there to use pads that will make them have infections and such like things. Honorable Speaker, some of the clauses that I really want us to look into and come and also reject is, for example, clause number 63 that talks about KRA having access to our information. Clause number 23 that talks about amateur sporting association being ad uh, added additional tax. And honorable Speaker, some of the repercussions that we will have as a country if we continue with this finance bill is that we are making our, our, our investment climate to become a very unpredictable one. We will make our country not be in, um, uh, and have appetite for investments from foreign investors and local investors.
Take your call, Mama. Take your call. Member for Kaspul, order Mama Zamzam. Order Mama Zamzam. Mweshimewa Zamzam. Walio kupigia kura Mombasa wanakuangalia ukekeza vidole kwa wenzako. Take your seat. Endelea mbunge wa Kaspul. Thank you, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to allow the voice of the Kaspul to be heard. After doing comparative analysis, including the other financial uh, bills which had been brought be before the House 2022-2023, we hereby voice our rejection of the bill in totality. I also want to congratulate Kenyans for coming out in advance before the leaders to do a lot of demonstration which brought some amendments which are not a factor of this discussion now. I want to draw their house to close uh, 46. You know fuel is a major factor of production. Increase in fuel levy it affects production because in economical world, movement of materials and human uh, produces uh, good goods. So by increasing the fuel by 7%, actually it will increase production of uh, essential commodity, which will increase the prices. I also want to draw attention to clause 54, of VAT remittance. Before uh, this is uh, brought, the remittance was being done within 30 days. Now it has been reduced to three days, which means Department of HR in any department will have to bring additional staff which will increase cost. The other clause uh, 48 on IDF which has been increased from 2.5 to 3 percent will also affect the cost of the product because there will be increment in cost of manufacturing which will also kill industrial product. Uh, I've also seen uh, proposed amendments which is not a subject of uh, today's discussion as they are increment in uh, 16 percent on bread there is also 16% on transport of sugar. There is also increment of 16% on financial services, which will bring a great impact. I want to sum summarize by saying, any legislator who votes for this, you will have signed your political obituaries. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Okay, none. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this bill contains an array of tax proposals that affect the different tax laws, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the intention is to give the government the legal force to collect taxes to finance the budget, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ordinarily, this bill has gone through all the legislative stages that every bill ought to go through, Mr. Speaker until it became part of the public debate, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, taxation, all laws affecting taxation are generally emotive, polarizing, and highly political. Mr. Speaker, the debate on this bill has taken two dimensions. One is political. Mr. Speaker, the political dimension has been convoluted, highly polarized, full of propaganda, misinformation, misinterpretation, Mr. Speaker, and this is part of the norm of our Kenyan society, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as a member of the Finance and Planning Committee, we were guided by reason, we were guided by the public interest, and Mr. Speaker, we were keen 
on the views of the Kenyan taxpayers, Mr. Speaker, who appeared before the committee, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, proudly, I must admit, the bill has published. If we will not have effected any amendment, will have been difficult to implement, will have been difficult to internalize, Mr. Speaker, and why, that is why we as the members of the Finance and Planning Committee, Mr. Speaker, took time to listen and be guided by fairness and the principle of public participation, Mr. Speaker, and that's why we came up with a raft of amendments. And this amendment, Mr. Speaker, has done away with VAT on bread, VAT on transportation of sugar, VAT on financial services, VAT on increase on, uh, I mean increase on mobile, the 2.5% on vehicle, Mr. Speaker, the excise duty on uh, edible oil, and many other changes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what I want to say is this. This is a house of tradition. This is a deliberative house. And I want to ask my colleagues here. This bill, as amended, meets the expectation and the test of time. And I want to ask you, don't be intimidated. Pass this bill as amended, and it will add value to the taxpayers who have elected you. These other shenanigans, these other hula blues and propaganda, you have the right to address your concerns. But as elected representative of the people of Kenya, this bill, as amended, meets my expectation. And therefore, I urge you, to, and certainly you know, Professor Omelo, I, I do not belong to the list of the members. Member for Taita. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for also giving me an opportunity to contribute to, to this very important bill, the Financial Bill 2024 of the year 2024-2025. And, Mr. Speaker, from the onset, I want to say that I support the bill. And may, Mr. Speaker, may it be known that my vote is a yes to this bill. And so that uh, those who are sending me very, very many and fake messages should stop. And now they know. Mr. Speaker, initially I was a bit worried after listening to my people about uh, some of the issues that were, they were not comfortable with. But, Mr. Speaker, I want to commend the Committee of Finance for the good job that they did. The committee went and listened to Kenyans. They did a very good part public participation, and they took the views of Kenyans. And uh, when they brought this bill, Mr. Speaker, they incorporated the views of Kenyans. We can see the amendments, the proposed amendments, Mr. Speaker, which are good and are very considerate. Mr. Speaker, VAT on bread was a thorn on the flesh of Kenyans. And I'm so glad that uh, the Finance Committee negated or deleted that bit on the, on the finance bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the tax on vehicle as well well, it was also a contentious issue in this country, but uh, that one was also deleted in the bill, Mr. Speaker. That is also a win. Mr. Speaker, tax on mobile, mobile transactions, was also something that Kenyans were talking about and they were not comfortable with, Mr. Speaker. The committee did it justice to Kenyans as well because that tax is no longer there. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that this bill promotes local manufacturers because when we exempt taxes on the local uh, manufacturers such that uh, the ones that uh, produce stuff like uh, sanitary towels, diapers, uh, and, and uh, uh, this stuff, Mr. Speaker, then we, we will be pro promoting the local manufacturers and therefore creating employment to many Kenyans because this... 
Thank you. You have uh, finished your time. Peter Kaluma. Yes, Lel Mengit. What's your point of order? And under what standing order? The standing order. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, I have an issue with the internet connection. Pardon? The Wi-Fi. The internet connection of this house, Mr. Speaker. The Wi-Fi is not functioning. And we need to communicate to the Gen Z out there, Mr. Speaker. We want to know what is happening out there and the reaction of the population. Please, Mr. Speaker, can we ask the clerks, uh, the people responsible for the ICT, so that they can fix this menace? The Thank clerks you. will take care of that. Kaluma. I thank you, Honorable Speaker, for allowing me to speak to this uh, particular bill. Honorable Speaker, debate on finance bill is the most important debate in any democracy. In fact, the history of Parliament is that the main reason as to why Parliaments were established is that there should be no taxation without representation. So, Honorable Speaker, let me begin by clarifying that it is not President Ruto outside there who is taxing people. It is this Parliament that taxes people. And that is why, Honorable Speaker, when you look at Article 94, the Constitution is very clear. Our first duty is representation. And, and, and because of that, Honorable Speaker, on this matters touching on finance bill, I want to urge my colleagues, including myself, that when yes. the position of your political party or your political party leader is not aligned with the position of your people, on this, stand with your people. Stand with your people. And, then, and so, Honorable Speaker, I'm standing to oppose because the people of Oma Bay Town constituency for whom I speak are saying the imagination that we can impose taxes on bread is bad. The imagination that we can impose taxes on vehicles which are already assets is not good. The imagination, Honorable Speaker, that we can tax, impose any taxes on eggs, whether imported or otherwise. The people of Oma Bay tell me, Honorable Speaker, is bad. Honorable Speaker, I'm encouraged with the thinking that we can drop most of those I've mentioned. But Honorable Speaker, let me mention that when you were at the University of Nairobi, if you needed to change diet, the only thing you go to is an egg. It's an egg. This is the, 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 the diet balancing you know, <laughs> food, egg with sukuma wiki, you have ugali, you are done. It is for students, that is the case in the villages. Honorable Speaker, you may say we are going to impose taxes only on imported table eggs, but how will you distinguish between those eggs you're using to hatch and the eggs uh, to be eaten on the table? Do we have the machinery to confirm it? Honorable Speaker, there is no empirical data, empirical data. And, and, and this is where I think the Finance Committee failed this house. Do we have data in terms of the amount of eggs which are imported against the amounts produced locally that are in our market? Once we increase the price for imported eggs, going by the amounts, my fear, Honorable Speaker, is that when you go to the shop, you will not distinguish. Honorable Speaker, the last... Time up, Ferdinand Wanyonyi. It is three minutes. Don't talk as if it is ten minutes. It's three minutes. I, I want to take this opportunity, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, to remind this House that the budget is actually an annual circulation. And therefore, I'll ask members, and I think the opportunity is there, not only that, but not to weep our emotion on this. Let's not weep our emotion on this. Let's, as be, the opportunity has been given to us to have suggestions so that we can be able to have suggestions that can be able to at least correct whatever they has, we have gone wrong, to be able to correct uh, and put in whatever input you can put to be able to create more opportunities for our people. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, my is to ask members to come up with those suggestions because the ball is in our court to be able to come up with whatever suggestions you have to be able to uh, 
correct and implement some of these issues that can be able to make this country to be self-sustainable. As you know, you are told Kenya is now the 27th fastest growing economy in the whole country. And therefore, I want to take this opportunity to thank the committee led by my brother Kimani that we should be able to move faster and be able to, to be able to come in with suggestions to be able to move because one of which, as you say, you want to uh, uh, you want to dismiss this uh, particular proposal. We have CDF and have given us like 50 million shillings. We have the calf uh, for the ladies that again 30 billion shillings and of course electricity to be able to have our country with a nice uh, approach to economy by having electricity all over the country. Therefore, I think this bill is good enough. We should not actually dismiss it for the sake of it. We should be able to come in with positive approach to be able to move forward. As it is today, I do just want to dismiss because uh, it, somebody called me and asked him, what, what do you want me to, uh, uh, to, 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 to remove? He didn't even know. So let's not go by emotion. Let's go by whatever we have and be able to move forward our economy. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Manduku. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For avoidance of doubt, I stand to oppose the Finance Bill 2024 and urge my colleagues to vote no. Mr. Speaker, the bill as presented before the House goes against our own tax policy, which we approved in this House. But curiously, Mr. Speaker, in an effort to expand the tax base, there's a provision that has been sneaked in that will compel families to pay capital gains tax on land that they transfer to their children. If you look at the proposal to amend the Stamp Duty Act Cap 480, I find it difficult that if I give my son land or if I ask my family to donate land to my children, I'll be compelled to pay some taxes. Further than that, Mr. Speaker, and having worked at the Port of Mombasa, I can tell you that this country is a net importer. And therefore, increasing the IDF fees by 0.5% will have a net effect of having expensive goods manufactured locally. Mr. Speaker, there's a provision also in this bill that seeks to expand or to extend the number of days that the Kenya Revenue Authority can get back to taxpayers on decision making from the 60 days to 90 days. I find it curious that we want to give the taxman a lot of time to get back to us on very simple decisions which would otherwise streamline taxation. Mr. Speaker, my advice to the government is that they should get down to work. Avoid listening to treating economists and avoid too many prayers. Get back to work and grow the economy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Kajado Central. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, Honorable Speaker, I rise to support the Finance Bill uh, 2024 for the following reason, Honorable Speaker. One, the Finance Act 2023 had reduced the import declaration fee from 3.5 to 2.5 percent. This honorable speaker not only gave us a whole of 10 billion shillings, but it also encouraged importation. And honorable speaker, we all know the net effect of this. The proposed finance bill, Honorable Speaker, is proposing to take back 
the importation declaration fee to 3.5 and therefore discouraging importation and therefore growing our industries. Honorable Speaker, I'd like to commend the Gen Z's who have been out there, but also advise them to seek information because one of the reasons why these young people are out in the streets is mainly because of unemployment. This importation declaration fee that has been increased seeks to grow our manufacturing sector and therefore seeks to employ the same young people. Second, Honorable Speaker, is the eco levy in Clause 45 of the bill. Honorable Speaker, we all know the effects of climate change, the negative effects of climate change. This levy, Honorable Speaker, seeks to protect our environment from environmental wastes, which is one of the contributors uh, to climate change. Honorable Speaker, we could go on and on on climate change and the effects and the negative effects that this uh, has brought to the, to the economy of this country. And lastly, Honorable Speaker, as a pastoralist, and I also urge the pastoralist uh, members who are here to be keen. In the past budget, we have a one billion shillings that is meant to be restocking money for our people. Our people had suffered losses due to drought. The one billion is going to be a game changer to our people. There is also money for value addition. And this, Honorable Speaker, I support the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Karole Omondi. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to speak to this bill. Let me begin by acknowledging that the bill is 300 and, uh, uh, and 132 pages and 65 clauses. So to say that you are rejecting it in totality is just playing to the gallery. I think there are good things and bad things about in the bill. Mr. Speaker, I would like to talk to three things only because of the limitation of time. The first one is a clause that is being introduced in this bill on tax abandonment. Uh, I've not had a lot of public discussion on it. But for the first time, we are being asked to make provision in law for the Commissioner of Tax together with the CS Treasury to give tax waivers where, in their view, the tax cannot be collected. I think this is a very, very fundamental uh, 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 activity that requires the input of this House. I think tax that is due is already public property and any activity to waive it or to claim that it, it can be abandoned must have the input of this House. So we, I will be recommending I've, or rather, I've already recommended certain amendments that will come to the floor of the House to recast this particular clause to see that any attempts to abandon tax are subject to approval of this House, as well as the requirements of Articles 201 and 210 of the Constitution of Kenya. Secondly, there is another provision in this particular uh, bill talking about uh, investment allowance for spectrum use. I believe this matter should be looked into detail because it also has retroactive effects on the tax that will be collected from the telecom companies. I believe there's a lot of work as parliament we need to do on this matter to see that we do not create a loophole for tax losses of a very large scale. Finally, because of limitation of time, I would also like to acknowledge that there are very many good initiatives in these particular proposals or in these bills especially those on cement and use of clinker. An impression was being created that the cost of cement will go up. Actually, the bill is reducing the cost of cement by waiving a lot of charges on the clinker. And I think that should go on record. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I will be supporting with amendments. Thank you. Dendi Nyoro, Chairman Budget. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. And before I proceed, Honorable Speaker, I would wish to beg because we are on the other side of expenditure. If possible, you could add me a few minutes so that I bring forth a message I have for the House. Okay, I'll uh, give you an extra two minutes, so you have five minutes. 
Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as the rule provides in the PFM Act, Article 39A, that we have to balance our expenditure and our revenues. And Honorable Speaker, I want to talk as the Chairman of Budget, and I actually want to talk as an indifferent party, that whatever may happen on the, um, on the bill, the Budget and Appropriations Committee is prepared, Honorable Speaker. But from the onset, we want to loud Kenyans for their voices. This country belongs to Kenyans, and when they express themselves, they are doing precisely what the Constitution provides. I also want to loud all the Kenyan um, uh, leaders, including our side of government and the other side, Honorable Speaker, because we are all geared to the welfare of the Kenyan people. Honorable Speaker, I have since, and I want members to, if possible, they can have this in their mind as we debate. I have since received a letter and communication from the National Treasury addressed to the clerk of the National Assembly, but I am copied as the chairperson of budget. And Honorable Speaker, the Treasury is looking in all scenarios. Scenario number one, if the bill passes only with the amendments from the Finance Committee. Scenario number two is actually if the bill, the MPs in their wisdom decide that we shelve it. And Honorable Speaker, if the status quo remains that we pass the bill as proposed by the Honorable Kemani Kuria and the committee, the appropriations bill passes as it is, Honorable Speaker, as we did last week. However, Honorable Speaker, it is important for members to note that in case there is a downfall in terms of the revenues by the proposed 200 billion that was to be raised in the finance bill, Honorable Speaker, then the government and the National Treasury and the Budget Committee is also prepared for that scenario. And I have communication, Honorable Speaker, for the National Treasury from the proposals, and I wish that I read some of them that if the bill does not pass, Honorable Speaker, we'll be reducing the budget for the State House, 451 million, budget at the State uh, uh, Office of the President, 451 million, security organs, defense, for example, will be losing 7.75 billion, ongoing pivots in our constituencies will have to shelve that ambition by reducing by 800 million, Honorable Speaker, higher education loans board will be losing 3.2 billion, Honorable Speaker, the JSS teachers, 46,000 of them, Honorable Speaker, by letting this bill pass, will actually be giving jobs at the permanent and pensionable. And Honorable Speaker, if the wisdom of this House is to shelve that decision, then it means the JSS teachers, whom Honorable Speaker, I would persuade this House that we confirm there will be no funding. NGCDF will be reducing by 15 billion shillings, which is 50 million per constituency, Honorable Speaker. The monies we appropriated for electricity, 50 million per constituency, Honorable Speaker, by again not giving the National Treasury the power for more revenue raising measures, the 50 million per constituency will be disappearing today, Honorable Speaker. Coffee Cherry Fund will be cut 1 billion, Honorable Speaker, if there is no funding, Honorable Speaker, through the finance bill. Our last plea is this. This letter is public information. It can be shared to the members of parliament. Honorable Speaker, my plea is this, as the chairman of budget, that if it's possible, the House Business Committee can actually bring the appropriations bill this afternoon. That the decision that we take in the finance bill, we can also cascade the same by appropriating the, the proposed cuts in the appropriation bill so that we can finish the entire business today, Honorable Speaker. However, However, Honorable Speaker, I am sure with the same energy that we are speaking either for or against. We will also explain to Kenyans, the JSS teachers, I am sure those who will be voting against their uh, confirmation to PNP, we will also explain to them, Honorable Speaker. Those voting against increment in CDF, we will also be, Honorable Speaker, explaining to Kenyans about it. Those who will be voting against the increment, Honorable Speaker, of employing 20,000 more teachers will have an ample time to explain to uh, the teachers of this country, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker, 
the proposed cut in terms of roads is 15 billion. Those who will be voting against the increment of 15 billion to roads, I am sure they'll eloquently explain to Kenyans about it as Honorable Speaker. A minute to finish. Order. O Honorable Speaker. Order. On. Order, honorable members. Order. Order. Give him three minutes and wind up. Honorable Speaker, I want to be very objective. Honorable Speaker, these are the proposed cuts in case there is no revenue raising measures as proposed by Honorable Kimani Kuria. Honorable Speaker, number one, as I said, I want to be, to be very clear. State House has been cut money 500 million, Office of the President another 500 million, security like defense is 7.75 billion cuts. Honorable Speaker, the same. We have already promised our JSS teachers that uh, the 46,000 of them will be employed and on permanent and pressionable. Honorable Speaker, if we don't give the National Treasury the power for revenue raising measures, it means the people will be voting against the confirmation of the 46,000 interns will have ample time to explain to them how they voted against them getting permanent jobs, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the reduction in NGCDF is 15 billion shillings. That is a small figure, Honorable Speaker, because I can see members are saying 50 million is not much. In Kiharo, it's a lot of money, Honorable Speaker, that every constituency will be cut 50 million shillings starting, starting, Feb, starting uh, July, Honorable Speaker. GAF, GAF, we just added them half a billion. Honorable Speaker, the proposal is to reverse the 500 million and also to reduce further by an extra 1 billion, Honorable Speaker. The money we appropriated oh, for electricity, God. 50 million per constituency, Honorable Speaker. I hope those who will be voting against electrification in our villages will have time to explain to Kenyans why they are voting against electricity in our rural areas, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, there is a proposed Order. reduction. Order. Honorable Commissioner Mishi, I know you differently. Order. Order, honorable members. Order. Order, honorable members on both sides of the house. Order. Order. Honorable members on both sides of the house. In the tradition of Parliament, if you approve of something, you thumb your feet. You don't wail and shout as if you are in a rally. This is not a rally. This is a House of Parliament. Dindi, can you wind up? Honorable Speaker, the other thing is that there is a proposed reduction of one billion shillings in livestock restocking. From our side, we believe those who lost, lost their livestock deserve to be compensated. Those who will vote against one billion that is going to live South Chris talking will explain to our uh, pastoral this honorable speaker. Honorable speaker also, the money proposed for reduction for school feeding program is 1.8 billion. On our side, we believe the 1.8 billion is needed to feed the children of this country as they go to our schools, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, the political parties, we can all agree in unison. We are proposing a cut of 900 million I know that is not contentious. We can agree to cut it this afternoon, Honorable Speaker, because you are also uh, prepared for it. Honorable Speaker, there is a proposed cut of 5.5 billion shillings for cash transfer. Our parents who registered last year deserve to get their cash transfer. Order, time up. Bed Simba. Order. Uh, Asante sana, Rosa Buyu, you have already spoken on this bill. You have no business doing what you are doing. Asante sana, Mwishimua Speaker. Kunipafuru sana mini weze kuzungumzia kuhusu mswada huu wa fedha. Mimi nimesimama kupinga mswada huu. Na kitu ntasema hapa, viongozi, mwishimu malalamishi ya mama tako ya wananchi. Mwisikize vilio wa wananchi. 
kuongeza ushuru wa mafuta kutapandisha kila bidhaa ambayo inahusiana na mafuta. Kwa hivyo hii ni shughuli ambayo haifai kwa sababu gharama za maisha zitakuwa juu. Kuweka ushuru kwa bidhaa zinazotoka ngambo zitamrudia tena mwananchi kwa sababu bidhaa zinazotengenezwa hapa nchini bado haziwezi kukimu mahitaji yetu mpaka tutachukua tena kutoka kule zile za ngambo ambazo zitaleta shida zaidi. Kwanza tutengeneze viwanja vetu kabla tujaweka ushuru huo. Na kuhusu kwamba fedha zitatoka wapi? Wapunguze matumizi katika ofisi za serikali. Wanaweka pesa nyingi kuhudumia wageni wakija. Kama mgeni amekuja mpe maji ya kunwe. Na kama ni lazima akae paka mchana mpe kidheri, mwambie hiyo ndio chakula chetu cha kitamaduni. Sio kukula makuku na madini kwa gharama za wananchi mnaleta paka tu katika sehemu zenu. Kupandisha bei ya mikate. Eh, mwananchi wa kawaida ni bidhaa ambayo inatumika kwa kila boma. Kila boma asubuhi na jioni natumia mikate. Wewe unaenda kuongeza ushuru wa mkate. Na mkifanya hivyo tutakunywa chai na mgoka kama ndio mnataka hivyo. Kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker ni kwamba serikali punguze ile matumizi ambayo wao wanafanya. Wapunguze safari wanazokwenda nje. Waende mahali kiwa ni muhimu na ni watu wawili pekee hapana kwenda watu 30, alafu mnasema wananchi waongeze ushuru na huku mmechukua ndege nzima mnaenda nayo huko nje. Mnakwenda mahoteli mnazungumza ambao mikutano mnaweza fanya katika boardroom zenu. Hiyo ndio sio ni matatizo. Kwa hivyo mimi nasema kwamba ushuru ama hii hii mswada wa fedha uangushwe huu kwa sababu wananchi wameusoma, msione wale watoto, wale vijana wameandamana, walisoma kwa sababu huu mswada uko katika mitandao, wanajua kila kipengee kile kilichoko pale. Mnaongeza matairi, mnaongeza vyombo ambavyo vitapima saratani. Eh hey, mnaongeza bidhaa ambazo za x-ray ambao tayari matibabu ni gharama na saizi mnaongeza tena itakuwa sahihi watu wanaumia watoto wanajinyonga huko kwa sababu ya, ya depression ambayo ziko nazo kwa hivyo mheshimiwa speaker nimesimama kupinga mswada huu asante sana mwengi mtuse <laughs> Thank you Mr Speaker and uh, Mr Speaker No uh, my friends thank you Mr Speaker I wish to make a very brief contribution and my contribution first of all is to debunk some erroneous myths that have been perpetuated in this debate Mr Speaker during this debate a perception has been created that the contestations around the finance bill have only happened after president william ruto became president nothing can be far from the truth mr speaker those of us who are students of history know that taxation began 3000 years before christ actually in the ancient kingdom of egypt and even at that time taxation was contentious it has also been said before this house during the government of kenyatta 1 during the government of president moi during the government of president kibaki during the government of kenyatta 2 and even now the finance bill has been an annual event and it has never been a smooth sail but something different has happened this year mr speaker during the many times that the finance bill has been presented before parliament a lot of the times the voices of the people have never been factored by either the parliament or by the executive but for the first time in history the voices of the people have been heard and been have been factored in the report that was presented before this house by the finance committee one of the principles of good governance is responsiveness responsiveness to the wishes of the people and i want to loud the finance committee for being responsive to the wishes of the people of kenya mr speaker politics is a very interesting game on tuesday and if we may be heard in silence mr speaker On Tuesday after we finished our parliamentary group I had a very jovial discussion with some of my friends who are on the other side I had very jovial discussions with some of my friends who are on the other side and they were saying why have you removed everything that we wanted to rely on in the finance bill to do politics and I asked them but you complained about these things and you have been heard and they have been removed and they told me you know the work of opposition is to oppose And now that you have pulled the carpet under our feet we must find something new to hang on i am saying this so that kenyans know 
that the opposition to the finance bill is majorly inspired by politics. It may not be inspired by the content. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, as a lawyer, I want to say, and this would have been ably articulated if I may get one minute, that the issues that have been complained of have already been overtaken by events. They are actually otios. Finally, what is the effect of rejecting the finance bill? The effect of rejecting the finance bill is to resort back to the finance bill of... Joseph Oyula. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to also contribute to this uh, important bill. Mr. Speaker, I want to start by thanking the Finance Committee for the work well done. It took a long time, but they came up with a, a good report. Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding the amendments that were made, this uh, bill was a disaster. This bill is assuming that the Kenyans, Kenyans uh, tax rate should move to a higher rate regime, which is not comfortable for this country at all. Mr. Speaker, we should not take ourselves to a higher tax regime, which is going to cause stress to our uh, business community and the individuals. The country needs to move slowly towards a higher uh, uh, tax regime. If the country is moved very fast, Mr. Speaker, then we will not uh, balance our budget. Mr. Speaker, we need to make sure that uh, the revenue is raised, yes, but also the tax rate is comfortable to the community of this country. Mr. Speaker, as we go through this bill, Mr. Speaker, let us uh, note that increasing the tax rates does not guarantee raising that money. It has happened in the bill for 2023. We never made it. It's, the chances are that during this uh, uh, period, we may also not make it. So the Treasury should not come up with such a disastrous proposal in the tax rates. It is for this reason, Mr. Speaker, that we are rejecting this bill, and I would want the Treasury to take it back and come up with a bill that is balanced, a bill that will ensure the country is raising revenue and a bill that will ensure the people of Kenya are not stressed. This is very important because if we raise the, the tax and uh, we don't raise the, get that money, it will not help the country at all. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Jen Kagiri. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me an opportunity to contribute to this very important bill. Honorable Speaker, allow me to start by congratulating the Finance Committee for listening to Kenyans and honoring their requests on the deletion of the taxes that they felt were not, that were punitive on them. Honorable Speaker, I would want to contribute on the clause on the introduction of eco levy on sanitary towels and diapers. Honorable Speaker, I speak as the chairperson of the 47 women representatives. And recently, Honorable Speaker, we had the opportunity of enacting the Education Act of 2016, where we ensured that every uh, student from class 5 to class 8 girls receive their sanitary towels. Honorable Speaker, out of the 47 counties, only four local manufacturers were given the opportunity to supply these sanitary towels. Honorable Speaker, this prominent house has been treated to a lot of drama and uh, untruthful stories of the situation we find ourselves with sanitary towels. Allow me, Honorable Speaker, to state that this levy has been introduced so that we encourage our local production and our local manufacturers, Honorable Speaker. I hear some members say that we will have uh, low supply because we don't have enough manufacturers. Honorable Speaker, I have had conversations with our manufacturers who are able to produce enough sanitary towels for us. 
Honorable Speaker, a visit to the supermarkets made me learn that sanitary towels that are man locally manufactured are cheaper than those that are imported. Honorable Speaker, we cannot allow importers to continue making unscrupulous profits on Kenyans here, yet they pay no excise on their products, and the local manufacturers have to pay VAT on their raw materials. Honorable Speaker, I stand to support this bill, and I stand to support the equal levy be charged on sanitary towels and diapers to ensure that we grow our local manufacturers. A local manufacturer told me he used to have 600 employees. He has reduced them to 100 because of idle capacity. Honorable Speaker, it is our time to stop speaking from uh, both sides of our mouths. If we want to create employment, we cannot be the defenders of importers. Anybody who wants to import can come set up the industry locally, and that's where we are going to give them all the business that they need. And if they lack a place to go and uh, establish their industries, I'm gladly welcoming them to Laikipia County, where they can come and set up a manufacturing industry, and we will not charge them any duty as long as they're producing diapers and sanitary towels locally within our country. Honorable Speaker, allow me to conclude by saying, you are, uh, Honorable Speaker, allow me to conclude by saying, I'm speaking as a user of sanitary towels, as well as a mother to a toddler who uses diapers. So, Honorable Speaker, anybody telling us about imported diaper, uh, sanitary towels, they range from the price of 75 shillings to around 175 shillings. Locally produced uh, sanitary towels are ranging between 55 shillings and 75 shillings. And on a watch. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, from the very onset, allow me to say that I rise to oppose this bill. Honorable Speaker, the Finance Bill 2023, I mean 2024 2025, has redefined our public discourse on things that affect us, especially on the question of how, when, what and where to tax the people of Kenya. I want to take this opportunity to thank our Generation Z because they have reminded us of what is stated under Article 2 and how we as this legislative house, the executive and judiciary arrive at the positions in which we arrive. Honorable Speaker, this generation in their public discourse on the question of the finance bill has reminded us that the sovereign power actually belongs to them. All this power is delegated power. The power including that power to levy taxation is a power that is a delegated power. It is circumscribed, it is limited, and must be used for and on behalf and for the good of the people of this country. This is what the people in the Generation Z have told us. I have two points to advance, especially because of the time that we have. Let me talk about tax administration. Honorable Speaker, a misrepresentation has been made in this administration and in the last two finance bills that the more tax you levy, the more yield you will get in terms of revenue. Nothing can be further from the truth. There is a big revenue shortfall from the 2023-2024 financial year in terms of tax revenue. Honorable Speaker, the policy underpinning the revenue or tax collection in this country, and especially this administration, is wanting. There is very little that has been said in terms of what measures that have been put in place to seal the loopholes on corruption, which would lead to higher yields as opposed to imposing more taxes and taxes on every issue. Honorable Speaker, I also want to speak on the policy disconnect of the better uh, agenda of this government. I sit in the Trade Committee, and on the two places where you can get more employment for the youth in this country, in ICT, digital economy, they have levied taxes. They have now come with the position that we have listened to you Kenyans. We have listened, we have reduced bread, we have reduced eco levy, we have reduced this and we have reduced this tax. The fact of the matter is that this was a long con. The real bill is what is in the report. Member for Manyata. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. 
I want uh, Honorable Speaker to draw the House and the public in the Constitution of Kenya, Article 10, read together with Article 118, Honorable Speaker, the national values and principles of governance, and Honorable Speaker, public access to information and participation, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, let me say that the conversation around the finance bill has actually uh, given this House and the leaders in various parastatos, including the Treasury, a wake-up call. Honorable Speaker, from the onset, there is a need to engage Kenyans in the process of formation of the finance bill. And Honorable Speaker, the good ideas and the bad ideas in this finance bill, Honorable Speaker, shouldn't have gotten to this House without engagement by the public, Honorable Speaker, from the onset and from the formation of this bill, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we have made it even more difficult to the Chairman Finance Committee, my brother Kemani Kuria. He has have had it so rough for the few weeks because he had to explain what the thoughts of the Treasury Department of this country from a point of his own logic, Honorable Speaker. And I want to call upon the Ministry to change tactic. And also, maybe, Honorable Speaker, it is the right time to think about how we can empower and entrench permanently issues to do with public participation and public en engagement, Honorable Speaker, in our laws. Because, Honorable Speaker, we need to rethink the public participation laws so that the public can be with us from the onset of formation of our bills moving forward so that we don't have good ideas that are going to have a backlash of Kenyans because of lack of participation, uh, Honorable Speaker. The putative clauses that are found of themselves in this bill, Honorable Speaker, the issues of motor vehicle tax, the cooking oil, the airtime, should not have gotten to this bill, Honorable Speaker, where we are today. And I feel it is important we learn from this. Honorable Speaker, where we are as a country, we need to know and show Kenyans that we are cutting costs. Wamboka. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, from the onset, I want to say I oppose the finance bill for the very reason that we are representatives of the people and the people have spoken. I think over time, Kenyans are losing their cool day by day. As we witnessed on Tuesday, Kenyans and young Kenyans particularly, whom I want to congratulate, were on the street saying that this bill is not good. And there are the people who send us here, Honorable Speaker. So if my people of Bumula constituency have told me that where they sit, they are overburdened and no more burdening, and I should not say no, and they elected me, Mr. Speaker, I must go by what they say. The committee in its report proposes to increase the road maintenance levy from 18 shillings to 25 per litre for all petroleum fuels. If this proposal passes, it will directly increase price of fuel by about 7 shillings, Mr. Speaker. However, this proposal may not be effective. One, you want to, you want to, to tell border borders that you are our people. You are the people on the ground. You are the people we wanted to lift from bottom up. At the same time, you now want to, them to buy the same fuel at a higher price. How are they going to manage? 
And I want to tell the chairman of this committee that when people are overburdened, they cannot afford these taxes. You must review the 2023-24 uh, finance bill and you realize that you did not achieve what you wanted because it's too expensive for ordinary Kenyans. So you will still not hit your target because you are overburdening these people. Mr. Speaker, our constitution talks of public participation. The chairman introduced this as an afterthought, meaning he has not subjected this to public participation. On behalf of Mamamboga, on behalf of Boda Boda, on behalf of people who cannot afford their living, Mr. Speaker, we say no. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I oppose. Member for Molo, Joro Sore. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for granting me this opportunity for me to contribute to this important uh, financial bill. Mr. Speaker, let me start first by appreciating uh, what uh, the Chairman uh, Finance and the Budget have done with their teams. And uh, Madam Speaker, allow me to say that uh, Kenyans had cried so much, even in my constituents had gotten a lot of people making requests for us to do different amendments in relation with the bread, the issues of the motorcycle, motorbikes, motorcycles, cooking wells, pumps, and so many other issues. And therefore, Madam Speaker, I'm just standing to support this finance bill because the committee and the members of this parliament have heard the cries of the members of this uh, country. Therefore, Madam Speaker, still on that point, we cannot sit here in this parliament and forget that we are the representatives of the people, and our people needs a lot of support in different sectors. Madam Speaker, in this finance bill, we are getting each constituency in this country 50 million Kenya shillings in relation with electricity matters. It is in the same finance bill, Madam Speaker, that we are also adding 401 billion Kenya shillings to the county for development. Madam Speaker, in the same finance bill, we are here also to appreciate that we have gotten addition in the CDF. Also, the GAF team has gotten uh, addition. And uh, Madam Speaker, it is on this finance bill, which is also we are gaining a lot, that even our 46,000, our JSS teachers, they will be confirmed. And then, Madam Speaker, in relation also with this finance bill, it is good also to appreciate that in this country we have a lot of roads which are destroyed. Every time we are camping in the office of the CS Murkomen, and therefore we, when we are getting funding through for our roads, and uh, Madam Speaker, on that point, some of, that, of us, we have projects which are stored in our respective constituencies. Therefore, Madam Speaker, we are supporting this bill, which also caters for our elderly, which also caters for matters of uh, farmers and uh, very many things in this country. Therefore, Madam Speaker, we stand here as members of parliament also to remember that it is good to be honest as members and it is good also to guide our people and we elected members of parliament to give the good direction to our people. Therefore, Madam Speaker, whoever is rejecting this finance bill is against the will of Kenyans. Kenyans want development. We have heard the cries of Kenyans and Madam Speaker, we have done the right amendment. And your time is up. On Abomuliungi, Mwingi Central. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I am directed by the people of Mwingi Central and uh, the youth in general to reject this bill. Madam Speaker, I therefore rise to oppose. Madam Speaker, this bill is uh, not only punitive, but uh, re retrogressive. Madam Speaker, the amendments were meant to wink Kenyans because in the first instance, why did you put tax on bread? 
Why did you put tax on diapers? Why did you put tax on cooking oil? These are essentials. Why did you put tax on M-Pesa? Why did you ta put tax on Boda Boda? Madam Speaker, I'm very disturbed by this finance bill, especially because this government is insensitive even to the sick. There is a tax on cancer equipment, which will eventually increase the cost of treatment of cancer. Madam Speaker, the bill in general <coughs> intends to increase taxation, which eventually will increase the cost of living. And it will make life harder and make Kenyans uh, poorer. Madam Speaker, we recall that uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa government promised a bottom-up economic model, taking money to the, to, to the asylums, to the villages, to the poor. But this bill is now taking money from the poor and bringing it back to Nairobi. Madam Speaker, I care for the people of Mwingi, I care for the jobless, I care for the youth, I care for the asylums. I therefore reject the bill, I reject high taxation, I reject, reject high cost of living, I reject poverty, I reject oppression, I condemn treasury for bringing this shoddy bill to parliament. And therefore I demand its, its withdrawal. Madam Speaker, I oppose archaic, punitive, outrageous, and careless finance bills in the future. I say no to this finance bill. I say no to oppression. I say no, no to unfair taxation. I say no to poverty. I reject the finance bill. I reject, I reject, I reject, I reject, I reject. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Member for Butere, Honor Botindi. Asante sana, Madam. Asante sana, B Speaker, kwa kunipea na fasi. Uh, jambo la kwanza nataka niseme ni mesimama kwa kupinga mswaada huu wa fedha mwaka welfu mbili na ishirini na nne. B Speaker vile unajua kwa Kenya wanaangaika garama ya maisha iko juu na serikali ambayo iko kwa mamlaka ilitafuta kura na mamlaka ikiambia wa Kenya ya kwamba watashukisha ushuru wakasema ya kwamba wataweka pesa mfukoni watatengeneza kazi na watafanya maisha ikue mema kwa ule mkenya wa kawaida kwa hivyo hii mswada wa wa, wa fedha unaongeza ushuru ambayo ni kinyume na vile walieleza wa Kenya hii mswada unaongeza uh, gharama kwa uh, ubebaji wa miwa kutoka kwa kwa shamba ikienda katika kiwanda na hiyo itadhuru uh, bei ya ya, ya ya mkulima kupata re, 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 ile ile faida kutoka kwa miwa pia tuko na kipengele ambacho kinaongea kuhusu maneno ya ya, ya kuongeza bei kwa kwa vifaa vya kufanya utafiti katika ugonjwa wa saratani. Kwa hivyo mimi kama mjumbe wa Butere B speaker mimi napinga mswada huu wa fedha na ile na nasema ya kwamba wenzangu ambao uko kwa serikali watimize ile ahadi ambayo waliambia wa Kenya tunataka tuone mama boga akifaidika katika serikali tunataka kuona boda boda akifaidika tunataka kuona mtu wa chini ambaye ni hasla akifaidika tutataka tuone viwanda zikiwanawiri sio kuweka ushuru mingi katika viwanda kwa hivyo bi speaker mimi kama mjumbe wa Butere nataka niende katika rekodi ya kwamba nimepinga mswada huu na najua wa Kenya wengi wako na sisi na sisi tutapiga kupinga mswada wa 2024 asante sana member for sigor lochakapong Yeah, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, now, I rise to support this Finance Bill 2024. And uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, 
arising out of the report of the Finance and Planning Committee that has considered uh, the recommendations through public participations of stakeholders, that is Kenyans, and proposed a raft of amendments to the Finance Bill, Honorable Speaker, I would want to support based on that. Now, Honorable Speaker, when you look at the report of the Finance and Planning Committee, which is a committee of this House, having looked at the Finance Bill and having listened to the stakeholders